And welcome to High School Physics Explained, and today I want to talk about AC motors, or alternating current motors. So first of all, let's remind ourselves basically what an AC motor is all about. So here we have a magnet over here, and we have, in this case, a slip ring commutator. And a slip ring commutator ensures that we have a constant connection to a power supply, in this case an alternating power supply, and that causes this particular ring to turn. And of course it turns because of the motor effect, that the current as it goes, let's say, across this direction here, will cause it to turn depending on the polarity of the magnets over here. But this particular type of motor has a couple of limitations or some disadvantages to them. So let's have a look at that. So what are some of those disadvantages to an alternating motor in practical sense? So let's have a look at them. The first thing is it requires a high current. So in essence, what that means is, is that this particular design of a motor isn't very useful where very small currents are needed. For example, a little fan in a computer does not require huge amounts of current. So as a result, this particular type of design of motor is not very useful for that sort of situation. The second aspect is the fact that you have contact with the commutator over here. These brushes are making contact, and as a result, you're going to get sparking and you're going to get heating, which means friction, which means energy loss. And not only energy loss, but of course, those are going to wear out. So an alternating current motor here like this will have its disadvantages in that the fact that this is going to be problematic. The most important disadvantage is the fact that it can only turn at constant speeds. That is, the speed is determined by the alternating current. So let's say, for example, we apply a standard voltage that is found in your house, and the frequency of that is 50 hertz. So if I were to connect this to a 50 hertz supply, this motor will spin at 50 hertz. If I want to increase the speed here, I would need to increase the frequency of my alternating supply. So it's not so simple to have a variable speed motor. You need to change the frequencies of the supplies. So that's a big disadvantage. The last thing is, is of course, it can burn out. So it requires high current. So you already have a high current in. It has some back EMF, but the back EMF isn't very high because of the fact that it's alternating. And as a result, you're going to have an issue of burning out because the currents are quite high. So there's a number of disadvantages. So as a result, we call this type of AC motor a synchronous motor. Synchronous really means in sync. And so it's in sync with the supply. How can we remove some of those disadvantages? Well, the first disadvantage is the brushes. If we can remove the brushes, we remove the friction, and so as a result, we can get a significant part of our problems out of the way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use induction to make a turn. How do we do that? Well, that's what the rest of this video is all about. So let's first of all go on with some definitions. And so here is our AC motor. And so you can see what we have here is our slip ring commutator. And we have a supply and so forth. So it's very diamagnetic. You've got nice curved magnets here. And that one's sure we get maximum torque and so forth. But clearly there are two major parts. There's the part that spins. In this case, we have a coil that spins. We refer to that as the rotor. Nothing new there. Of course, the magnets are fixed. And so they are stationary and therefore we call them the stator. If you apply a voltage like this over time, it's going to go to spin. Now this here is another motor. It's been pulled apart. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the permanent magnets with electromagnets. Now electromagnets means that we can have, again, still a strong magnetic field, but it's variable dependent on the input voltage supply. So we're going to have our electromagnets being our magnetic supply at the outside, and we have the inside here that rotates. So now we have two types of course, really. We have clearly the one that rotates, and that's the one we call the rotor. And of course, there's a coil inside there, which we've already got in the previous example. But now we also have coils that provide the magnetic field, and they're the ones that are called stationary, which we call the stator. So now let's look at a simplistic diagram of that. So here's my 
permanent magnet and my permanent magnet over here and here's my coil. Now this is not a magnet that's placed in the coil, this is a magnet that is created as a result of a coil and clearly that will cause this to turn within this particular magnetic field. So there's nothing stopping me from replacing these permanent magnets with electromagnets and of course that will give us a little bit more control in terms of the strength of the magnetic field. Now of course that provides us the setup for a, what we call a universal motor. Now I've referred to this as AC motor, but of course an AC motor simply has slip rings and if I replace those slip rings with split ring commutators, I'm going to get a DC motor. So that's why we call it universal. But again, a reminder, the outside are called status and the inside is called the rotor. So they are, it's universal because they both work on AC and DC as long as you change the slip ring or the split ring uh, for that situation. So now let's have a look at a setup that actually is where we have four magnets, two at 90 degrees to the other, and let's see what that does. So let me explain this situation, okay? So what we have here are two magnets over here and nothing is different to what we already have. And then we also have these two magnets over here that do the same thing. And both of them have current inputs and as a result, they will produce a magnetic field. But of course, you now have two magnetic fields that are 90 degrees to each other. But this here is a capacitor. And what it causes is that this particular ma magnetic field has a supply current that is 90 degrees out of phase. Remember, we're applying an alternating current. So here's the Y component, and here is the X component. And as you can see, they're 90 degrees out of phase. But let me pause it for a one second like so. As you can see at this particular position, we have maximum current over here in this direction, but very little in the horizontal direction. And so this red line over here represents the sum total of the two currents and hence also the strength of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is due to the fact of the sum total of the magnetic field in this position and the magnetic field in this position. Now if I play it again and then stop it, let's say at that position, you can clearly see that in this case, we have a strong magnetic field going horizontally this way, but in this way we have actually no current, that's the position over here. And so the magnetic field is horizontal. Now if we go on to, let's say, a symbol at this point, you can clearly see here we have both produ uh, producing a magnetic field and they add up to produce this vector. And as you can see, as I play the rest of the video, what you end up getting is a rotating magnetic field. So here is the funny thing. You are getting a status situation, but because of the 90 degree phase, you are developing a rotating magnetic field. Now, hopefully you can understand that that can be very, very useful. So here we have a permanent magnet that is now placed inside the rotating magnetic field, which is produced by these uh, fixed magnets on the outside. So the stator, that is, those electromagnets that are not moving, are actually generating a rotating magnetic field, and that is causing my permanent magnet inside to rotate. So Notice here, we have no wires connected to my magnet in the center. So this magnet is free to move without any frictional forces applied due to some sort of brushes and so forth. And that in essence is really important in terms of this type of motor. But what else produces a magnetic field? Well, obviously any loop of wire that is experiencing a changing flux will actually produce a magnetic field. So let's replace that. So now what we have here is we have our initial diagram that you just saw a moment ago on the left hand side. And what we've done on the outside we have is a cage looking device and it is called a squirrel cage. And each parts of that particular cage is experiencing a change in flux, which means it'll generate a small eddy current. And that is shown in the blue dotted lines. 
Now, of course, they will always produce a magnetic field that opposes the one that generates it. So they will be forced by away by the closest magnet that is around them. But because of the or rotating magnetic field, it will cause this to continually turn. And so as a result, what we have here is an induction effect or an induce inducing effect producing a magnetic field that therefore is being repelled by the very magnetic field that is causing that induction. As a result, we have this squirrel cage turning without any frictional problems like we have in a normal AC motor. So this is our squirrel cage. And so we have our squirrel cage, they're made of aluminium and the outside is also aluminium. And that part of course, um, is free to rotate. Now, the thing is, is that we will produce a little eddy current in one of these loops. Now, in to increase the effect of that, we in, in turn insert a laminated iron core that strengthens the magnetic field lines through each of these bars and that therefore means they will experience an increased eddy current and as a result, it will be free to turn more freely and as a result it will experience greater forces. Now the important of course is, is that this is laminated and that reduces the eddy currents within the core itself as well. So that is in essence what a squirrel cage looks like. In reality it's a little bit more complex. So over here we have our electromagnets and as you can see in our previous example we had only four magnets to opposing each other. Usually what happens is, is you have a whole series of magnets over here that are all slightly out of phase with each other. So it's not 90 degrees out of phase, they are progressively out of phase. And over here you can see you have your rotor and these are the situation. This is a squirrel cage over here where the eddy currents are produced. And this is uh, basically to increase its efficiency. So that in essence is an induction motor. Hope that helps you understand the induction motor. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.